Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess and we are about to watch a very exciting vlog. But first, I wanted to make an announcement. This video is sponsored by me, Roots and Refuge Farm. We have our own line of merch. Partner with a small business out of Arkansas. Friends of ours, we've been in a business relationship with them for a couple years now and they print all of our merch. Our t-shirts, our hoodies, which are never sourced from sweatshops. Uh, we do everything in pre-orders. And our current pre-order with our new design launch is now open. We've got hoodies and zip up jackets as well as short sleeves and long sleeve t-shirts in all of our new designs. And this pre-order is gonna be open for like the next, I think it's like 10 or 11 days, 10, maybe two weeks. And as soon as that one closes, We'll start printing those and shipping them out. We're trying to get these out as soon as possible to people. Uh, so if you're purchasing these to be able to have sweatshirts to wear when it's cool outside or even to buy maybe some holiday gifts early, now would be the time to buy them. We will be opening another pre-order back up, but this will give you plenty of time to get those things in if you order them now. So I want to tell you a little bit about our new designs. I do work with an artist in-house at BN Limited and send little doodles and ideas and and she turns them into lovely art. The first one you can see I am wearing and it says, talk to me about gardening, Roots and Refuge. Got lots of different varieties of uh, some of my favorite things to grow in the garden. I love making merch that, you know, I like it to say Roots and Refuge, obviously. I think it's really cool how um, the people who follow our channel and wear our shirts kind of like I, I hear stories about people like meeting each other in public places and ch Chatting and like striking up conversation because they're they're both wearing our shirts If you're gonna wear something with words or a design I like to make something that starts conversation and can build community So I thought this would be a really cool design talk to me about gardening um, I've worn this twice now in public and both times someone has said talk to me about gardening and I'm like why yes I would love to talk to you about gardening you never know where those conversations are gonna go some of my biggest gardening tips and things that I share with you guys are things that I learned from strangers while waiting in line at a farmers market or at a hardware store or somewhere that was gardening related where we ended up on that conversation and it's not always easy to get to that place but there are gardeners everywhere and I love being able to connect them that is also where the next design came from um, it says I love growing stuff and has different veggies and flowers incorporated in the design uh, my friend Wes was here and we were sitting on the front porch and we had just put together one of my garden beds and I was just sitting there and I said oh, I just love growing stuff and he said well there's a t-shirt right there and I, and I happened to have just been doodling this t-shirt out and I thought you know you're right and again I just kind of started to doodle and sent that in to be unlimited and that's another shirt that can be a conversation starter when you're wearing it out in public places now the last new shirt design that we have launching is actually not a new design this is a drawing that I made it was on a sticker uh, whenever I released my sticker pack a few months ago and it is the empty spider web that says you cannot have perfection and abundant life in the same place and so if you miss that story whenever I shared that story it was kind of my journey into becoming an organic gardener where the first year I'd always just sprayed stuff on my garden because that's what I was taught was the normal and the people that I talked to that's what they did and one year I hadn't and I'd had a big garden and it was so full of life that year um, I remember so many butterflies and pollinators and there was this big garden spider a riding spider and her web was there in my garden I passed it every day and I just got into the habit of saying hello spider and and kind of got used to her being there and then I ended up spraying my garden just as I had always done and I remember going out the next morning in the stillness in the garden and, and realizing that I had done something really detrimental to the life that I loved in that garden and that spider was gone and her web was empty and it broke my heart and it really was a life lesson to me that when our focus is only on the harvest we actually will end up 
destroying the life in the meantime, trying to get to the end goal. But when our focus is on the garden as a whole, we get to enjoy so much harvest, but we also get to enjoy the process. And that was my big turn point in my life into becoming a gardener that did things as naturally as possible was that empty spider web. And so that was the story behind the design. It did really, really well as a sticker. I got so much feedback and Maya actually brought it up and said, I think that we should put this on a shirt because again, I love to make those conversation starter pieces for people to wear. And that is definitely a design that could start a really cool conversation uh, when it comes to just organic gardening and organic lives in general that, you know, sometimes it's not going to be perfect, but that doesn't mean that it's not full of beauty and abundant life and that's a real reflection of my heart and my faith and so it's on a shirt now. Of course, we also brought back Real Food Comes Dirty. It's one of our favorite designs of all time. It's, and all of these are available. There's a link down below. It is on the special section of the Be Unlimited website and I will put that link down below. Thank you so much for supporting us. Our merch sales are a really, really big part of what enables us to do what we do as we're building our new farm. Every time I hear a story, oh, I was in the you know, the store today and I saw a Roots and Refuge shirt and we started talking about our favorite vlogs and all that. And I, I get kind of the witness of these different connection points among this community that's kind of built up around what we've done here. It is a massive blessing to me. So thank you so much. The link is down below. If you want to get those orders shipped out on, on this first pre-order, make sure you order now instead of later. Let's watch the vlog. <sighs> Our cow comes home tomorrow. In other news, look at these peas. They're already like, I don't know, a few feet tall. You wanna see the difference in good soil and not good soil. So this is the soil that had a really rough start and now even with being amended, things are growing more now than they were. But see these sunflowers in the corner right here? These are sunflowers. At the same time of planting those, I also planted this, this sunflower in the green stalk, which had great backed soil. It was Fox Farm and Bacto. I used a couple different kinds, but look at that. That's crazy. That's the difference between good soil and poor soil. And this is precisely why whenever people are like, I can't grow anything. I have a black thumb. I'm like, eh, your thumb really doesn't have anything to do with it. You probably either have poor soil or you just forgot and neglected your stuff, or you know, you put it in the wrong place. There's some way to diagnose why your garden failed. It has nothing to do with your thumb, I assure you. Unless, of course, you decided to grow your garden without ever getting your thumb anywhere near it, in which case that could have something to do with it. Oh, hey, Ben. Y'all Ben? Yeah, we're, we're working on the, um, um, we're trying to work on the cow pen, but we're waiting for you. You're trying to work on the cow pen, but y'all are waiting for me? Yeah. Y'all, Ben got his hair cut. Look how cool he is. And he got some sunglasses from the Dollar General. <laughs> we were out because he got his hair cut and he needed some pomade for his hair. And, um, hair gel. And hair gel. What kind of hair gel did you get? Invincible gel. Invincible gel. That's what it said on the bottle, huh? Must be yeah. true. <laughs> it's, it's still sticking up. But yeah. It's so we went in the store to get some pomade, which is what the Bart told him he needed. And then he also saw a bottle that said Invincible Gel. So we got some of that too, so his hair could be invincible. And then he saw those glasses. And, I saw the glasses. Yeah, and he saw those glasses and thought that would be really cool for a boy with invincible hair. Ben, you look so cool. We're going to pick up Hope, our New Jersey dairy cow, tomorrow which is easy but hannah who is hope's original owner hope was born on hannah's farm to hannah's first cow faith she told us that what we need to do here right off the bat is build a corral and we need to have two sections because we have to be able to separate the calf from Hope at night so that we can milk in the morning and then put the calf back with the cow. And we need to keep them in a small space because they don't know us and they are now moving off of the farm that they've only ever lived on to a new place. And it's very important when you get a new cow 
to teach them that you mean food and kindness. And so we need to keep her in a small space so we can get near her, handle her, feed her, give her treats, milk her. Because if we just put her out in this field, uh, she probably wouldn't want to come anywhere around us. It, she doesn't know us. Um, I think we're gonna try to unload these. Oh, I wanna be here. You want to help? <laughs> no, you know our friend Hope. Yeah, I know you have a friend named Hope. You think it's funny that our cow's yeah. name is Hope and your friend's name is Hope? What are y'all doing? Sit in a water bucket. <laughs> nice. We are water. All what right. We? We've got food and water here. Yep. <laughs> okay, so what's the plan, Sweet Maya? We got panels to do a 50 by 50. Okay. But I'm going to utilize our fence as two sides. Okay. And I'm going to utilize this gate to access where we're going to be milking. Okay. So we're going to go 50. I'm going to go from this corner and go 50 off and just figure out where the closest T post is. And okay. then we'll go 50 this way, put a wall going to this side of the fence, and then we'll do another 50 foot square. So there'll be two 50 by 50 pens. And okay. That means that, so that I believe you that this is going to work. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. All right, I need someone to hold the, the measuring. Me. I'll do it. Toby said it first. Hold it tight. Yes, sir. You see, it's like right here. So just go off of that I'm close. Gonna go, I'm going to attach it to this T post, and then we'll go out, and then I'll measure 50 feet this way and figure out where it falls there. So hold it there, Toby. Yes, sir. Yeah, don't move. Can I go? You can. So you can go right off the edge of that gate, it looks like. I mean, but you do have slack right now. No, but I'm also adding when a gate. Do 55 by 55? How far is this? Do you want like a... Okay, yeah, I could go to this one, I think. It'd be a little risky. No, I bought four extra panels. So that gives me an extra 12 feet each. The other one can be a little smaller because it's, it's just cat. for the calf at night. We're going to try to work with the gate open. And hopefully the goaties don't realize that there's freedom to be had. Okay, well that, that holds it up, right Maya? Yeah. Okay, y'all can let go. It's not that heavy. Thanks for bringing it over to me. Yes, it's Y'all yeah. thought that was funny, huh? You like it whenever mom gets scared. Yeah! <laughs> so I what? don't like it when mom gets scared because that's when I get scared. When she gets like scared of like thunderstorms, then that's when I get scared. <laughs> so when mom gets scared, it's time to get scared. I don't get scared much. I so when you get scared. <laughs> so cool, dude. Did the fence almost fall? I don't think it would have actually fallen, but it did scare me a little bit. <laughs> oh, you got jokes. <laughs> so these are like corral panels and buying these <laughs> makes me think because I drive by like big farms all the time and they just have this kind of stuff in excess like you just see massive areas where they have tons of these corral panels and now I'm like dang it's kind of like when you first start putting up fences and then you drive by places with like really long wooden fences or like just a massive amount of fencing and you're just like it's like you understand how much things are worth for the first time. So we bought these cattle, these corral panels, and truly, like, buying them all at once was a little expensive, but it's the kind of thing that if you're gonna have cows, it's really good to have. And the reason we wanted to have these here was because we didn't want to stretch a permanent fence because we are trying to keep many of the things on our farm movable, uh, reconfigurable, because we want, we want to 
be able to build our soil. We don't want to wear out the grass in any particular area. And the benefit of this corral is that we can take this down when we build our barn. If we need to make like a small pen for any reason, we'll have this. <laughs> Here we go. My hands are saved. What is that called? It's a hose clamp. Hose clamp? Yeah, that's what I started using. I actually built the uh, pig pen. Yeah. I used hose clamps so I can take them off and reuse them. Yep. Move that. Me, yeah. So you think one's enough? Yeah, because these, cl the bars that you would drop the pin into is pushing up against the T-post and then the fence is already strong. Like, okay, so, look. so what were you saying about the hose clamps? You use them on the pig pen? Yeah, so I stopped. When I built these pens, like the pig pen in Arkansas, I used wire, me and Ben turned did. And when we went to go change something, if we needed to move pigs around, I had to cut all the wire and then redo it to right. open it and close it. And so I, so I bought boxes of hose clamps you and can. that way I could just take them off and keep them in a bag somewhere. And save them. And, and save them. them. And maybe, you know, some of them might get broken or wore out or rust out, but then... <laughs> <laughs> If you've ever wondered what it's like having three little boys all in elementary school, it's a lot like taming monkeys at a circus. <laughs> they okay. scream for bananas, they climb over everything. Anyways, I think they're worth the investment. Uh, they're also a lot stronger as far as like holding something in place with wire even high tensile wire the more you twist it to tighten something down it weakens yeah and then it can just snap which these i mean they're not snapping no they don't it would take a lot of pressure to snap one of these so i actually brought three i don't think i need to add any more plus uh hannah said that uh hope respects fences anyway so she's not going to be trying to get out of this hopefully the goats don't try to get in it hey, Mom. the only the <laughs> only thing i was worried about was going underneath but i really don't think there's enough space because our goats are fat True that. Now I imagine that I'll have people asking, how are you going to keep these cows in these pens without a barn? And right now it's still very mild here. I know I'm wearing a jacket. That's because I'm a frost tender flower. It's like 65 degrees outside. Is it 65? Is it like 65 degrees out here? It's pretty chill. It's pretty chill. Did you hear? It's pretty chill. 65 degrees. I mean, I'm in a t-shirt. I mean, it's basically winter. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremiah's not even wearing a tank top. In Celsius, that's 18 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So for those of you who actually live in cold places, you're like, <laughs> you're cold, you're wearing a jacket. Yes. Um, hey, I can work in my garden outside when it is 90 Fahrenheit, 32 Celsius, and not even break a sweat. So come at me sideways over my coldness. Uh, the cow will be fine out here without cover. And the thing is with animals like this, this would not be a good permanent solution, but as a temporary solution, it is fine. Jeremiah is planning on building something similar to what Justin Rhodes uses for his cows. He has just kind of like a structure out in the field that he can go milk them under it and it gives them something to get underneath that you can move from paddock to paddock. And we're also putting a barn up. Um, we have sand clay on order to level out the space for our barn and it's it should be up just within the next few weeks to a month uh, before it gets cold. With farm animals, like even my goats, my alpacas with cows, you'll look out the pigs, you'll look out in the pouring rain and they're like just standing out in the field. They don't mind being wet. You'll look out whenever it's really cold, like well below freezing and they're just standing out in the field. They don't mind being cold. The problem is, is they can't be cold and wet at the same time. So something like this, keeping her close in a paddock um, near the house when we're getting to know each other, this is fine. Even over the course of next month, this would not be a big deal. Uh, but we are working on another solution. The thing is that even if we had our big barn up, we would still be doing this exact same thing uh, because we want to keep them in an enclosed space outside where they can get to know us and not be alarmed. They're not in a barn right now. They're staying in an open field right now without a barn uh, for much of the time. It's warm right now. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> oh no, we're being found out. Back up, Miriam. Go on home, girl. No, 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 no. <laughs> they discovered the freedom was to be had. They saw it. Look at them. 
No. Look at it, they're all coming running. Freedom! Come on. They thought that they could all come out the gate. They saw it open. They're Maggie, go. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they have 13 acres full of lush green pasture. I thought that's 14. If there's a possibility for an open gate and another side of the fence, that's where they want. Jax is a big boy now, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> He's not your baby. Huh? He's not your baby anymore. He's, uh, you're, he's always my baby. Y'all are all my He's a strong baby. When you're all bigger than me, you'll be my baby. Ready? Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. This is Gammy. Hi. You're du you're like double. You got you got <laughs> it on the front and on the back. <laughs> We pulled out our merch boxes and <laughs> Gammy went shopping. <laughs> and I went shopping. She said I could have as much of what I wanted, so I got every color. <laughs> Representing. So I introduced you guys to JJ in the last video, which is Jackson and Asher's dad. He's out here for the weekend. This is his mom, so Hi. Jackson Asher's grandma, my mother in love. <laughs> and, yes, my daughter in love. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you and I have been together for like 20 years now. Oh, so. <laughs> So, uh, she's out here. They came to watch Jackson in his last home football game before the playoffs, but it does look like they're going to go to the playoffs, which is pretty cool. And was worth every bit of the trip. Yep, so we were really excited to have them out. And now she's getting put to work carrying Got to corral earn keep. panel. You carried a corral panel or two in, 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 <laughs> yes. in your life. I know that to be true. A few of them, yeah. She has done a lot of barrel racing. Like barrel trying. Try everything. <laughs> trotting whatever <laughs> i've seen those pictures where you're like almost sideways going around those things you don't do that in a trot <laughs> yeah. so yeah. she's definitely hauled a corral panel before yes <laughs> trail riding round pinning that kind of stuff yeah she's the one who originally got us into horses in the first place and we'll get back to it one of these days yes we will yeah <laughs> sweet maya he's really good with horses i'm excited to see him with horses again one of these wait, days because he's really good with horses yeah he's very good so as it turns out Maya's math was pretty good there was a little gap here where the gate in that fence made it go out a little further but he took an extra panel here and hose clamped it together to close the gap well done sweet Maya I guess that's wrong hand sorry <laughs> yeah, I know everybody out there who's in the military would be like, you just slid it with your left hand. <laughs> and the rest of us would be like, no idea. Yes, civilian. <laughs> I know, it, I know. One more panel. Yeah, and then I need to run over to the barn and grab one of our extra watering buckets. And then we're ready. And then we're ready, Freddy. All right, let's see how far, let's see how close we are. Let's get it close. Let's get it close. Yeah, this all shifts, so we just got to get it close to that T post is all we're trying to do. We don't want to go too far because then we'll have to pull everything back out. Yeah. I think we went too far. Yeah. About a foot. Hey, Toby, why don't you go hold that so they can scooch it back out? Wait. So we need to scooch out about. Yeah, go hold that one panel oh, in place. Yeah, Toby, hold this here so we can adjust this for these to line up. Right, That's perfect. That's perfect. It's true that I'm nervous about bringing Hope the cow home and her heifer calf, which I have named, but I'll tell you guys when she gets here. I know that it'll be fine, but it's just, you know, it's a new animal. Thankfully, she still is nursing her calf. So while I am really getting the hang of hand milking and she's getting used to me and learning to let me milk her, um, the calf is still there. So if I don't get all the milk out, I don't have to worry about a risk of mastitis or anything else. Um, that's a big deal, having the calf on at this juncture is a big deal. I can't believe they're gonna be here tomorrow. Hey dudes, what are you doing? Digging a hole. Digging a hole. We have never digged this deep of a hole That before. was six inches. We felt, <laughs> we felt a sand pit. That was six inches? One. It's more than six inches. <laughs> Two, three, three feet. 
I think that's actually probably pretty accurate, Ezra. I measure Very by good. doing this because in school I use a roller. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I'm baldy. <laughs> Here is the corral. Pretty good size. And there's a gate right there that we can get to the house. Now, soon we'll have our barn up and it's like in this section. So we'll have access to the barn from here as well as there. I love when the sun goes down behind me. You can see how it just top, tip tops those trees. And shortly after that, it gets pretty dark. Hey chickens. I'm as ready as I'm gonna be for bringing my cow home. And I appreciate y'all hanging out, but I did wanna show you one more thing. It feels like a waste to have these tiny precious angels on the farm and not show them. Hey, tiny babies. Hey, tiny babies. Even the little runt is doing really well. Aren't they so cute? Yes. Oh, hi. Don't. Hello. Hey, mama. I'm not sure when Doris is going to have her babies. You think so, she'll have them soon? You know, I'm not even going to guess. Guys, it took like 10 years for her to get <laughs> So, Mom, we're having a movie night today. Oh, nice. Yeah, I asked Dad and he said yes. Woohoo. Oh, oh hot fence, darling. Oh, your brother just saved you. It's like dunk. <laughs> Are they so cute? Aren't they so cute? Ben's got a hold They're in ridiculously Ireland. cute. And Ben's they just gone. move around like a little pat. Ben, did you tell? They're also just kind of, I don't know how cold they are. They're just kind of shivery, too. Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, did you want to look at something cute? Here I am. You came up here to see the babies? Yep. Hey, I launched new merch today, and you're wearing, like, the OG Roots and Refuge merch. Yep. <laughs> Come over here, look. Aren't they so cute? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's adorable, huh? Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Y'all want to come say it? Yeah, yeah. We bless you. Until next time. <laughs>